Welcome back, baseball fans, to the Fall Carrier League for 77, 78, 79, 80. I know it's early. Uh, we're in the period of uh, both baseball leagues are done playing baseball for a bit, and it's about planning for the respective drafts. Um, we've already looked at a video where the the 77 or the 69, 70, 71. Excuse me, 76, 7, 8, 9. Uh, the postseason is beginning. The 76 cards were removed. All the team's designations of keepers, waivers, and retires have been done. And so we went into the 1977 box, which is this box right here. Now you'll see all the teams. And each of the teams has four guys designated as keepers and also the players who are currently in the carryover league under that team are, in, are also in the same uh, card set. Let me give you an example just really quick. So Kansas, I'm gonna pick Kansas City Royals. And the reason I do this is because of, uh, I wanna take, take a look at George Brett here. So this is the 77 George Brett card and it's magnificent, it really is. He hits 312 with 22 double, 22 homers, 13 triples, and 32 doubles. But we're already planning on taking the 1980 George Brett. So anyway, they have other options in, the, in 77. Of course, the Larry Gura, the Dennis Leonard, and the Amos Otis. It's not the greatest year for Amos Otis. But I would probably suggest that Dennis Leonard will be the, key, the, the guy from the keeper list, 20-game winner, that gets moved on. Now I'm not going to go through the um, teams. I just wanted to give you an example of how this was how this was sorted. So all these teams are going to have four keepers. Oh, and the, and the other side of the cards. Once you get past your keepers, right? These cards, the names of these cards, the Sensei Dempsey Martinez. These are already in the Carryover League, but they're in a year other than 1977. So there's these players are stored here. If I, uh, it seems that this 1970 version of that player is better than the card that's in the carryover league, the team could bump up or bump down, depending on the chronology there. So anyway, that's what these are. But tonight's video, I wanted to look at, because uh, this is my first chance to get eyeballs on, the, the 64 guys who are put on waivers, that's these guys, and the, and the 64 guys who are retired. And you're going to ask, if 64 guys are retired, why are cards here? Well, that's because these guys are just bad, and I put them on the retired list. But they're still worth taking a, peek, a quick peek at to see if they have a remotest chance of somehow getting back into the league. In addition to those, we also have the same free agent hitter and pitchers who weren't in this league last year. And this is their fourth and final crack of getting into the league with their 1977 cards. So these cards, these player names here, um, Paul Mitchell, for instance, was not in the league last year, or maybe not at all. And he's got all more chance with that 77 card to get into the league. But tonight we're going to take a look at the retirees and the wavered. So we're going to go worst to first. We're going to look at the retired guys. Because like I said, um, there's not a lot of them. And uh, they really technically weren't retired. I have a sort that I'm looking at on the spreadsheet by team. And it starts, the t uh, Ken Boswell was traded to Arizona and retired. There's the first guy. And looking at Ken, you see why. I mean, you're going to see that these guys aren't very good. But is there a chance? For a left-handed second baseman to get into the league, not without power, probably, or defense, or speed, or a 216 batting average. So probably not. Next up, Atlanta retired two guys, Mike Phillips and Ellie Rodriguez. Here's Mike Phillips. Just like Boswell. Not very good. Okay. Baltimore retired Willie Davis and Bill Fahey. Here's Fahey. No. Boston retired Rick Jones and Carlos May. Rick Jones is a nameless card, so no. And Carlos May, no. 
Burlington, the Expos, Larry Herndon, who didn't have a card, and Mickey Scott aren't here. Okay. California, Dick Bosman and Bill Singer, they're not here. The Cubs, Cito Gaston and Bill Plummer. Well, here's Plummer and no freaking way. All right, the White Sox, Bruce Kim and Wilbur Wood. Here's Wilbur, but he's all, he's worn out. He pitched almost 400 innings in, the, in 73 or 72, one of those years. So let him be retired. Moving on. The Reds, Gary Nolan and Joe Torre aren't here. Cleveland, Steve Dunning, Alex Johnson are not here. Colorado's Al Fitzmaurice, and probably not. 541, no thanks. Let's see. Detroit, Bill Freehan and Dick Allen are not here. Florida, Al Downing and Jim Cott. Well, Cott's here, and that's just, that's a lot of extra base hits and hits. And no thanks. Houston, Larry Durker and Ken Paper gone. Jeff Terpko and Mike Wallace are gone. The Dodgers, Gary Ross and Jim Mumbarger, they're both here. And rightly so. So you see, I mean, they weren't retired. They still played, if you want to call it that. But they were very bad. 5.59. And Umbarger, 6.32. So no. So I mean, I'm going to... That means... That's a good sign to see that the, that the retired guys here are really bad and deservedly in the right place. Uh, Las Vegas, Bart Johnson and Stan Thomas. Well, here they are. Here's Bart. He's got an ERA of 401. He's not so bad against righties, but no, he's not getting in the league. Stan Thomas, no thanks. That's 619 ERA. Okay. Then we move all the way down. Fergosi and Tim Johnson aren't here. Crawford and Rich Folkers aren't here. Vic Albury, Pepe Manguel are not here. Bob Bailey's not here. But here's Ray Burris. Who has a really lousy year. And he just has a lousy couple of years until like the early 80s. He's okay again. Mike Hegan's gone. Hey, take a look at this guy. Remember him? Dan Larson. He was a Houston Astro. His 76 guard made it onto Oakland's roster and he did very well but he is falling off a bit here he's oh yeah not even okay enough let's not let's not go too deeply into this Ohio Bryles and Demiri Bryles is okay against lefties but basically eh maybe but I doubt it unless you're desperate Larry Demiri mm, no so far, so good, and these guys are rightly retired. Brent Strom is gone. Stan Wall, Jerry Devannon, and then we have Ron Schuler. Well, this could make it. 440 ERA and a long man, but eh. You could, he's right-handed reliever. It's like the last spot on the roster you need a guy, the fourth reliever on your team. Um, then you have Mike Anderson here. Great defense. So he's a 1E8. And he would play against lefties to justify that defense. So this is for a team that is stuck with a bunch of platoon left-handed hitting outfielders. And you have Mike Anderson join your team against, uh, and you can hide that batting average by defense and the slight ability to hit lefties. So this is the first guy that has any sort of promise that I've seen thus far. Then you have Alan Foster, Danny Frisella, Enzo Hernandez. Uh, Pat Dobson, I think his shelf life is up. 6.16 ERA. Bill Laxton, usually a capable lefty. He gets, he kind of gets lefties out. You can kind of say it. Now, the, the interesting thing about this, this card's not very good at all, is it? And it's got a 4.92 ERA, but he throws left-handed, so you can never really dismiss a lefty unless he is, you know, got hits and walks in two columns. And you see uh, two of the columns against lefties don't have any on bases on them except the 12. So this card, that those four to eight in that walk, could earn him a spot in the league. All right, Rob Sparing, no. Buck 86. Pete Falcone, he's a lefty. He's rough. He's rougher than Laxton. He had, he's not too bad against lefties. 5.44 ERA. You know, again, if you're desperate, desperate because there are no left-handed pitchers, nobody can throw with their left arm in baseball, you go get Pete Falcone. All right, Lynn McLaughlin, he had a really horrible year here, 563. 
And the last two guys, Terry Harmon and Marty Perez. Terry Harmon, uh, this guy, when you look at it, uh, he's capable as a backup middle infielder in all three positions as a three. He's got some interesting power against lefties, some on base against righties, but basically not not good enough. You've got to you have to think you'd find better than this. And Marty Perez. Marty Perez has ability, slight more ability against lefties and righties. Same situation as Terry Harmon. So again, we expected that to be awful, and it kind of was. But now, the wavered guys is that the situation of going on waivers is that first of all each team had to put two players on waivers which means you also had to have a 1977 card for them and they do and there is 64 here and sometimes a team has so many nice keepers that they have to put a guy on waivers so you will find some talent in here these guys will be redistributed redistrib uh, throughout the league not all of them but let's begin in alphabetical with Arizona. So Arizona acquired Alan Ashby in a trade. I'm going to go team by team as who waived them. They acquired Alan Ashby in a trade and waived their own Fran Healy. This Ashby, no, but other Alan Ashby's. Again, you're also considering this player. So this player might have a good year in 1978, 79, and 80. We're just looking at the 77 year. Not a good year for 77 and Fran Healy. He gets lefties well. Zero arm catcher. Hits lefties okay. That's about all you get in there. All right, Atlanta is retiring their own Jim Crawford, and they traded for Felix, they traded for Felix Mione to retire him. Crawford, a lefty, same mode we talked of before. He throws with his left hand. That might get him into the league. Mion, his defense has fallen off. He can hit lefties well with power, but really not that big a deal. Again, these cards are just a little bit better. Sometimes you'll find a diamond in the rough, but they certainly are up for consideration. Baltimore waves their own Wayne Garland and Bob Myrick. Wayne Garland was a 20-game winner in 76 for the Orioles. Then they traded him. That was good because he, he never did, uh, followed that up. And he, In 77, he pitched 283 innings for the Indians. And he actually had a 359 ERA in 283 innings. This card would be fine as a starter eight and a starting pitcher. It'd be fine to get into the league as a number three or four starter. So I think Wayne Garland will continue. Bob Myrick, probably, uh, yeah, 362 ERA. So now you're going to see guys getting a little better. Myrick is better than any of the other left-handers we've seen to this point. He'll probably find some work in the league. Right now, he's the number one lefty available left-handed pitcher, so he'll find work until somebody better comes along. Boston, the world champs. So they ended up waving Doug Bird, who had a big win in the American League Championship Series. His 77 card is... Stats are okay. Nothing special here, but he might get into the league. There's, he's not horrible. He's a right-handed reliever who, who's not a starter six anymore so these guys are kind of dime a dozen the versatile Doug Flynn doesn't have the stick anymore still has that great glove but that stick is really bad so maybe not at least not that year for Doug Flynn all right next up the Expos got rid of Cookie Rojas and Wallace Cookie Rojas is uh, getting up there and long in the tooth not much to see here Joe Wallace boy he really fell off he only had like really one good year. Uh, was a lefty and then a switch. That's okay. Defense is good. Defense in center field is good. Might get him a job just because of his defense and his on base percentage. But mm, that one's kind of close. The California Angels uh, got dumped with Nino Espinosa and Fred Stanley. Now, Nino, believe it or not, this was actually a case of a guy. He's actually pretty good. He goes on the rotation with a 3.42 ERA. He got tossed into a bunch of trades, and he's a starter seven. This guy will get into the league. So it was the case of all the teams that Nino Espinosa was traded to had rotations full of guys, and um, including the Angels. And uh, he's he's going to be looking for work. I w he will definitely be picked by up by somebody. That's pretty good. This Fred Stanley card, it's a really good card. It's very versatile, just like the other middle infielders we've seen. 
The on-base percentage, check out the walks there. Look at seven and eight. That's an exceptionally good on-base percentage. That's like a 360 or 370 against righties. I think he gets into the league because he can play all these positions and he gets on base a lot. Hit 261 and just 46 at-bats. All right, next up, the Cubs acquired Mickey Stanley in a trade to cut him along with Ray Fossey. Stanley gives you value. Defense in the outfield, defense at first base, the ability to hit lefties, kind of, sort of. Interesting placement of homers for this type of card. 310 and 33. Three. That's kind of a cool, curious looking card. He'll probably get it. I think he'll get into the league. Sometimes there's so many guys looking for that final roster spot that is it, the competition stiff when you're looking for just a platoon guy to bring you defense. Ray Fossey. He hits righties very well. 276. Um, but it's all against righties, nothing against lefties, plus a plus two arm. That's a good enough stick to get you into the league, but as a catcher with a plus two arm, I don't know. All right, next up, the White Sox, Roger Metzger and Rick Miller. So Metzger's defense goes from being a one to being a two, and his stick is just about gone, so I doubt it. Of course, a two at shortstop still has value. Uh, so, you know, maybe a free agent at the very end of the draft. All right, Rick Miller's got an outstanding glove. One minus two E3 in all outfield positions and a B stealer, an A bunner. No power, of course. A limited ability to get on base against righties, not against lefties, and a 254 batting average. So that's not very sexy. I don't know. I mean, I just you just have to hit more than that. Or at least hit power. I mean, I, I give him credit for being a B stealer and good defense, but I don't know. That one's kind of tough. Big Red Machine cut their own Jack Billingham and Clay Carroll. Yeah, Billingham, we, we talked about this in the playoffs last year. He had a really lousy ERA, and he follows that up with an even worse ERA. So he's almost on the retired list at this point. He has a re resurrection when he goes to the Tigers, which is in the, I think, 78 season. He starts pitching well again. Now, here's the very curious Clay Carroll card. And if you go to the reference, for um, look at his splits. Statistically, his splits are not like this. So it makes me think that there was some erroneous data compiled by Strat. Because you're not going to find a batting average that looks like that and like that against lefties and righties for 77 Clay Carroll. But that's something to go check out if you have a, have a minute. Um... <laughs> I've, there's never been a card in my experience to be so far in balance not to mention I've never seen a card have, that has this many ridiculous on bases against lefties and there's a slight chance this card gets into the league just to face you know individual right handed batters or mop up duty but my gosh you just can't leave him in there to pitch an entire inning and just get have lefties have batting practice against this guy moving on the Indians, Daryl Chaney and Buck Martinez. Uh, Daryl Chaney really never... Yeah. No. And Buck Martinez, if he had a... He, sometimes Buck will have a minus three arm and that warrants consideration. No. Not not here. Colorado, Fry Slavin, they traded for, and Ed Cranepool. Fry Slavin's falling apart after one good year in 76. Cranepool is still... Uh, he's still stroking it. In 1977, in half a season, 281 batting average, some nice home runs. Can't really catch or throw a baseball very well. This wouldn't be a bad designated hitter. He might get in the league. All right, next up, the Tigers. Uh, they waive Paul Lindblad and trade for Steve Ranko. Lindblad had a great 1970s run for Oakland. 418, throws left-handed, always warrants consideration. Ranko is a starter six. I've already gets righties out. Don't like what he does against lefties, though. 357 ERA, but the split kind of ruins it a little bit. As a starter six, he might be a number four starter for somebody because he's not too bad against righties. He doesn't give up homers to righties. Best I can say about him. The Florida Marlins. Steven Gorey and Otto Velez. Mingori is still doing well as a lefty reliever through the whole decade, pretty much, to this point. Cleveland and Kansas City. This is a Kansas City card. Fine. 
309 ERA. He'll get in. He may be the best lefty reliever to this point we've seen. So, you know, he'll get selected just for that reason. If you recall, Otto Velez was playing in a platoon at first base for the Phillies in the World Series. They waived him. He actually does better. As he's now able to hit righties and lefties, that's a pretty nice card. That's a lot of OPS right there. Homers and walks. Not much defense. He'll, get, he'll at least get into the league because he hits lefties well, and he might be an everyday DH for a lousy team. Toronto Blue Jays makes a lot of sense. Sure. Toronto should probably go get this guy. All right. Halston. They released their own Phil Mankowski and Gary Thomason. Uh, Mankowski does the same kind of thing. He's like 270, 276, no defense, no power. Hits lefties. Fine. I mean, he could get into the league. Le Left-handed stick who can hit lefties and, yeah. No defense. He'll get into the league. Gary Thomason never really went, had a monster year. This is a good year. The homers, the OPS. Defense is atrocious. B Steeler, 256. Just a guy. Could get into the league, but again, you, you know, you, you're looking at a premium at first base and corner outfield. You have to give me a lot to get in the league. All right, Kansas City, Jose Morales, who they traded for, and Patek. Uh, this is not one of those good Jose Morales cards I, I mentioned, but he does hit 300 in a couple of these other seasons. Now, they couldn't keep Patek because they were keeping so many other guys. So he's on the waiver wire, but the Royals could bring him back if nobody else claims him. However, a two at short and a double A stealer, his own base is kind of whatever, but it was always like this. This is what you got from Patek the whole decade, a 262 bat. So it's not atypical. It's just that the, uh, the Royals have moved on to UL Washington at short. So they might bring him back. Or he might, you know, want to look for a change of scenery. All right, the Dodgers uh, traded for a couple waiver guys. Ken Brett and Mike Tyson. Ken Brett, as a starter, seven. Four, he rotates with a two, 452 ERA, but again, 452 is kind of high. Not a lot of home runs, nothing special. Uh, we talked long and lovely about Mike Tyson on the Padres with all the, those extra base hits he had as the Padres made that remarkable run to the National League Championship Series. But now he's back to Mike Tyson. Nothing special. Vegas cuts Bud Harrelson and Ron Hodges. Harrelson will have a better on-base years moving forward. Ron Hodges just is always, yeah, 265, but whatever. He bats left-handed. Uh, yeah. I hope his car doesn't get in the league. That means I'm desperate for left-handed hitting catching at that point. Okay. Next up, Milwaukee. Jose Cardinal and Dyer Miller. Cardinal still has some legs left. Look at that. He's an outfielder. He can't really... Lost his range. But he can play infield, too. And he has power. He hit lefties. And he can play against righties. He hits 239. I love the... I like the uh, positions. That intrigues me. He's like a poor man's Daryl Thomas at this point of his career. So he might get in the league. Dyer Miller. Now this is a pretty solid right-handed reliever. 355 ERA. He's not closer material, but look against lefty. 1-6 fly ball, single one, double one to two. Very cool to have that. Just because I like this card. Because of, that's really going to hurt the other team. So yeah, I think Dyer Miller gets in the league. Definitely. Alright, the Twins. Bill Campbell... And Beer Stein. Bill Campbell was a 17 game winner in 76. He still has legs in 77. 13 game winner. Don't know why the Twins are letting him go unless um, they're just loaded with relievers or they're scared away against the righties, but this is excellent. Righty gets lefties out like that. The walks and the homers aren't good. He'll be back. He's getting back into the league. That, this was a mistake by the Twins to let him go. Bill Stein, looks like Bill Stein always looks. Can play some infield positions, none particularly well. Third base is good defensively, though, this time. Uh, lefties and against righties again. Yeah, 256, 259. But look at the plate appearances. 
So this is one of the rare chance opportunities for Bill Stein to actually play a full season for a team. It was uh, 1977 with Seattle. So you have to think that this guy should get in the league. It, maybe it is going to be for Seattle. New York Mets liquidated a couple guys on waivers that they acquired from other teams. Andy Messersmith, deemed to be past his prime, but this isn't that bad a card. He's a starter seven, which is nice to have. Yeah, a lot of walks against lefties. I like the double fly ball. Maybe. Starter sevens are always valuable. Jim Willoughby. Don't like what happens against righties. That's too much getting beat up. And against lefties, it's not worth it either. 491, no thanks. The Yankees finally dumped some of their dead wood from a very disappointing team that was had World Series aspirations. Ed Armbrister was one of the dumpies, and as a pinch hitter, he'd be okay, but you know, you usually don't have the flexibility to have a pinch hitter on your roster. But there's Armbrister, 256. Brohammer was serviceable as a left-handed hitting second baseman with power. Pretty much the same thing, but the Yankees have moved on to a new direction. Oak Town, Larvel Blanks and Terry Humphrey. Ah, so the good blanks card, one of the rare good ones. Hits righties but not lefties. Can't field very well. And uh, maybe. Terry Humphrey, kind of meh. Plus arm, 227. Not much to look at there. Next up, Andahar and Sanguian from the Ohio players, who uh, had a lot of slots. Andahar is fine. He's a fine pitcher. 368 a year, 159 innings. He'll get some work. Starter six. Sanguin can still he can still stroke it. He can't throw anymore. But he was always able to hit and hit 275. This is a full season for Oakland in 77. I think they trade him back to the Pirates in 78. But anybody can have him and you know you don't like the plus two or and without power, but that's a nice batting average against righties. Good stats for a catcher. Next up the Phillies, Braun and Lomborg. Uh, they got dumped with Braun. He can only walk at this point. 235. Jim Longberg really was a disappointment for the 76 Phillies, and he continues that in 77. Probably not. Pittsburgh dumping Steve Dillard and Steve Swisher. Uh, no, for Dillard. He usually hits lefties well, but not even good enough there. Swisher, zero arm, hits lefties with power, but not good enough there. Portland dumps John Denny and Dave Hamilton. Denny, uh, he has he goes into a little slump. He has a nice... The early 80s are very kind to of John Denny in 81, 83, and 84. But we're still a ways away from that. It's time for him to uh, go back to the minor leagues and figure it out. Figure out how to pitch again. All right, a nice Dave Hamilton card. Don't know why Portland waved this guy. Who doesn't want a nice lefty reliever like this? 363 ERA for the Chai Sox. That's fine. I'll get into the league. Yeah, I think they had Terry Forster, and so they were stuck with too many lefties. So with left-handed pitching, as rare as it is, someone will snatch Dave Hamilton up pretty early. Padres are cutting Pepe Frias and Mike Lum. Pepe Frias, nothing much there. Mike Lum, oh boy, nothing much there. Except he's an E0, if you're into that kind of thing. Buck 60, no thanks. Seatle. Ended up getting uh, Doc Ellis dumped on him to see if he can resurrect his career in Charlie Williams. Doc actually does, I mean, this is not bad. He doesn't, yeah, he's 12 and 12, but he goes in the rotation 363 ERA. He'll be in the league. Someone's going to sign this guy. I'm surprised Seattle doesn't have a better option than this. Maybe that's a good news for Seattle that they have, actually have better starting pitching than this. That would be a good sign. Um, in any event, Doc Ellis will find work. Charlie Williams, mm, probably not. Don't like his vulnerability against lefties. He's only so-so against righties. The Giants, Larry Milbourne and Wayne Twitchell. They cut their own dudes. Larry Milbourne, you see why. He's not any good. Wayne Twitchell, he's, uh, he didn't have many good years. And that was not one of them either. St. Louis, Mark Littell and Ted Sizemore. Now, Littell... This is still his Kansas City card, but then he moves over to St. Louis. This is a t fine card. I'm surprised St. Louis waived him. He will find work. Sometimes the teams 
that wave a guy are often the same teams that pick the guy back up. They're just kind of hoping they can sneak the guy through waivers. <laughs> Interesting Ted Sizemore card. Everyday second baseman based on no other positions. Sneaky good card. 281 batting average. And look at the plate appearances. This was a full year for the Phillies. A full year for the Phillies in 77. Um, this card will get into the league. I'm not saying it's a great card, but it'll get into the league because he played a full season at 281. Um, because he has this card, the 1 2 card, it shows that Philly had a lot of hitters who hit above 281 in 1977, a, a year that they won the National League East. So, again, this is a case of so many good players on the Phillies that Sizemore got waived. Two teams left Texas and Toronto. The Rangers are getting rid of Rod, uh, Rod Gilbreth. Nothing special there. The ability to hit lefties and play third base, but he can't play short anymore, which kind of stinks. Tom Grieve just can't get it together anymore. 225, not worth a platoon. Sorry. Toronto, the last two guys, Bo McLaughlin. Nah, I don't think so. It was a 420, 424 ERA. And Earl Williams, the last player for Toronto. His power has gone down, gone down, and gone down. He still has it, a little bit of it, but basically it's barely there. You can play first and catcher. 241. Nothing special. Again, a, um, a catcher with a zero arm, and then a first baseman. Yeah. First, a right-handed first baseman can't hit lefties really well at all. No, no, no. Probably not. So there it is. You saw a mixed bag of wavered guys. And you saw some pretty bad retire, retired guys, as expected. And that's the first look at the 77 carryover guys. We'll have plenty of time before the Fall League starts to take a look at all the other uh, keepers so that you can decide should we keep the 77 version of a player or one of the future years. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you next time.